Hello everyone, I am Anurj Nakade and you are watching Live Law. The RTI Act or the Right to Information Act as many of you may know is an act that allows people to ask questions to the government institutions. Since its introduction in 2005, the RTI Act has been in the news for holding government accountable. For 2G Spectrum Scam or the PM Cares Fund, it has often been the tool of the people to find political and executive accountability. In this video, we discuss the judgment by Justice Pratibha M. Singh of the Delhi High Court regarding the RTI Act. This judgment is in fact very crucial regarding how the RTI Act can be used and who can use it. But before we get to that, let's understand how the RTI application process works. Under this Act, you can either go to the RTI website or write a letter or an email to the public information officer of the office you want to request the information from. The contact information of the public information officer is usually mentioned in the website of the government body. Depending on whether the information you need is from an office under the central government or the state government, you can approach the central public information officer or the state public information officer. After receiving your application, the officer should reply in about 30 days. In cases where there may be a threat to a person's life, the public information officer should answer within 48 hours of the application. Suppose a public information officer fails to provide the information you requested or the information provided to you is not enough or not what you needed. In that case, you can file your first appeal with the first appellate authority who will review your information request and try to answer your application. If you are still not satisfied with the reply, then you can file a second appeal with the Central Information Commission or the State Information Commission. Imagine a case where the information commissions either at the central or the state level also fail to provide the information that you need. Then you can approach the high courts and eventually the Supreme Court. So now that we know how the RTI application process works, we can proceed to the judgment itself. In this judgment, the Delhi High Court asked the question of whether a foreign national can receive information under the Right to Information Act. In this case, a Tibetan teacher who was working at the Central School for Tibetans in Darjeeling had requested information relating to his letter of employment from the government. The Central Public Information Officer in case denied the information to the teacher, saying that the RTI Act does not allow disclosure to anyone who is not an Indian citizen. The first appellate authority also denied the application and said that the public information officer was correct in their ruling. The Central Information Commission, however, thought that the public information officer was incorrect in not providing the information to the teacher. The CIC instructed the Central Public Information Officer to provide the information as requested and also imposed cost of Rs 25,000 on the public information officer for not furnishing the gentleman with his information. After that, the public information officer approached the Delhi High Court challenging the imposition of costs. The Delhi High Court said that the order of the CIC was correct and held that any information that would relate to the life or liberty of a person cannot be denied to such a person. The Delhi High Court observed and I quote, there are several areas where even non-citizens such as Tibetans in the present case, serving as teachers in India in a Tibetan school, can seek information. It cannot be said that there is a bar on such persons to such information. Thus, the CIC was right in holding that there is no absolute prohibition if the authority deems it fit to disclose the information. The court also held that while the public information officer failed to consider that non-citizens must be provided with the right to information under the RTI Act in this case, there was no evidence of foul play or bad faith intention and hence no cost need to be imposed on the public information officer. That's all we have for you in this video. We hope that you enjoyed this focused report on the use of RTI and please let us know in the comments if you'd like to see more content of this kind. For a detailed report and the full judgment, please visit our website. We will also ensure to leave a link down in the description below to the full article. If you found the video informative, please like the video and tell us in the comments how we can shape our content to bring you your legal news 
in more engaging ways. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you.